Joining us now here on the MMA Report on Radio Influence, man, it's going to be returning to the cage, CES MMA 36. Of course, this event going to take place on June the 10th in Lincoln, Rhode Island. Of course, it's an event that you can watch on Access TV. We're joined by the man that's going to be taking on John, John Lemke. It's Josh LaBerge, who is coming off a win at CES MMA 35 against Ron Weathers, 8-1 in his last nine fights, the only loss coming back at Bellator 134 at the end of the second round against Matt Bissett. Josh, I appreciate the time. Obviously, uh, I know a lot of fans had that opportunity to see your fight against Matt. Uh, your only loss in your last nine fights. Is it one of those things when you have that and you have been on an absolute roll? Is it have a short-term memory, forget about what happened in that fight, and just move on? Uh, it's it's hard. Uh, that's That's what I'm trying to do. But it's hard, you know, because I was on uh, I was on a roll before him, and he uh, he took <clears throat> he took me out when I was on fire, you know. So it's a kind of a bit of swill till the swallow, but you know I've gotten over it, moved on. I like Matt, you know, I respect him, uh, especially after the fight. Kind of underestimated him a little bit. Didn't train as hard as I should have, and uh, came back bit me in the ass. It was a lot tougher than I thought, but um, yeah, you know, you just uh, take it on the chin like a man, move on. Maybe one day a rematch, you know, but uh, just got to move on to the next fight. You know? Is that one of the biggest lessons you you learned is, look, you can't underestimate anybody in this game? Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. That was the, uh, you know, the biggest learning experience as far as losses. You know, I have a few losses, but that was the, uh, that's the one that really made me realize I can't underestimate anybody. I knew Matt from the local scene, and um. I just thought I'd be a bit tougher at him, and I thought I'd be able to catch him with a punch and, and put him out. But um, he uh, proved me wrong. He's a lot tougher than I thought. And uh, I learned, you know, make sure you train your hardest for every single fight, like it's uh, like it's that big fight, you know. And, of course, coming off that win at CES, I'm in May 35 against Ron Weathers. Now it's John Lemke. Uh, you know, John has fought there just like yourself up there in the Northeast regional scene. Uh, this is his first fight since losing to Bruce Boynton uh, back at NEF 21. First off, what's your thoughts about John as an opponent? Um, I don't know too much about John. I've seen a couple of his fights on YouTube. He looks like a scrapper, which I like. He looks like a brawler. Um, he's definitely not afraid to engage, which is what I'm looking for. My last fight with Rand, I felt like he didn't really want to engage with me. And it's kind of hard to fight somebody who doesn't want to engage. So I'm looking forward to uh, to this one because I, I I know he's a tough dude. I know he's not going to be afraid of my punches, and he's going to be willing to engage with me. And um, maybe a firefight, maybe a brawl. We'll see what happens. But uh, he's definitely going to come forward. He's he's going to come to me. That I'm pretty sure of. And um, I'm I'm looking forward to that. You know, it's always it's harder to uh, it's harder to play deep. Um, it's easier to play defense than it is to play offense, you know. It, so. when, you, when you know you're facing a guy that that's going to to come at you, is that an easier fight to prepare for as opposed to a fight where you know you're going to have to chase down your opponent? Yeah, I mean a little bit, not not much, a little bit though, because like I said, he's going to be there to hit, and uh, he's going to be there to to uh to exchange with and go for takedowns to grab to clinch with to do whatever when you're fighting a guy that doesn't want to engage and he's just trying to jump at your ankles or jump at your your waist you kind of got to chase him down and that, to me that's a that's a little bit tougher because you gotta you gotta commit you know 100 percent of the time and um that's where i feel like you make you know you you make your mistakes and that's where other other opponents can kind of capitalize when when you overcommit yourself or you're trying too hard to get them so in my eyes, yeah, I think it's a bit easier. You know, everybody's got different views on, on fighting, but uh, that that's just my particular uh, view. You talk about, you know, hey, you know this could be a, a firefight. This could be a, a brawl. Um, do you do you change it all training when you know that you're walking potentially in that kind of fight, or is it one of those things of you just train like you normally do and just, just understand that uh, this could be a brawl? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, just what you said. I mean, I, I haven't really switched up the training. I'm just, you know, I'm jumping out of the last camp, jumped right into another camp. Um, I'm just continuing training the way I'm training. And because I'm actually that type of fighter, too. You know, I'm more of a in-your-face, you know, uh, brawler, if you say, if you will. And um, this this is going to be my kind of fight. This is this is much more of a fight that I'm that, that excites me more than my last fight against Rand. Rand was a, was a really good ground guy, and there was no doubt that he wanted to, to – 
play it on the ground. You know, Lon- Lunky, I think, is different. He's he's like myself. He's a stand-up guy. And um, I think it's going to be a really good fight. It's going to be a great fight, great fight for the fans. And uh, I'm just continuing training the way I am, training hard, making sure I'm in shape. You know, I'm not making that mistake I made against Bet. I'm not being in shape. And I'm gassing out in the first fucking minute. You know, I'm not trying to do that again. I learned my lesson there. So as long as I'm in shape, I see the fight going my way. Second fight. It- Second fight in less than two months. You mentioned about going from one camp to another. I mean, do you almost do you view this as as one long camp, or or do you view it as two different camps? Ah, uh, that's a good question, actually. Well, I took a week off. Um, I took a week off after the fight. I actually got sick, so I took like maybe a little little, little week and a half off. But then I jumped kind of right back in. Uh, yeah, I guess you could say it's one. One long camp, you know. I haven't got any injuries, which is a good thing. And, and usually, you, you you get some kind of an injury, especially if you jump from camp to camp. I've done this, you know, a few times in the past. Past few years, I've only been fighting like once a year, um, due to finding an opponent. But um, I'm really excited to to jump right back in, you know, less than two months after my last win. You know, I just want to keep the ball rolling and um, stay as active as possible. But uh, yeah, I, I guess you could say it was one long camp with with a bit of a break in between. I mean, you with, know. with having these two fights so close together, is maybe a, a lot of, of this camp is making sure that you're doing the, the recovery methods needed to make sure that y- your body is going to be at peak performance come June 10th? Yeah, yeah, that that's a big factor. You know, you got to make sure you have those times to rest. Um, and, I, and I'm pretty good with that. You know, if, if I feel like I killed it one day and I'm really sore, the next day I'll, I'll, I'll take it a bit easier, you know, um, if I do two sessions in a day, then I'll make sure one of them's a lighter session. I don't, I don't fuck, I don't go in there and and and, and kill it and push it to the to the brinks every single session because that's not how to train. You know, you you need you you kind of have like you know two hundred percent days, you know two eighty percent days, two two sixty percent days, and a fifty percent day or something like that. You, you can't go one hundred percent every single session you have because you're not gonna recover. I mean, you don't recover. Um, if you don't recover after one training session, when you jump into that next one, you're just not, you're not there. Your muscles, you're, you're, you're weaker, you're slower, you're, uh, you're just not there. So that, that's definitely a big thing. And, uh, me and my coaches, we, we timed that out pretty good. I, I feel, you know, I don't really go in. Is there time though in, inside your camp where, you know, maybe it's just, you wake up in the morning and you just go, man, I, I, I I can't go in the gym today. I'm, I'm going to, if I go in the gym today, I'm going to tear my body down. And this is not what's best for me peaking on fight night. Yeah. Oh, that happens a lot. That happens a lot actually, but I, I make sure I go and do something, you know, even if it's, uh, even if it's just shadow boxing and, and doing light mitts or if it's shadow boxing and footwork or, it's, you know, light bag work, I feel like that a lot. I mean, especially when you throw lifting in, you know, cause I lift too. Um, I work. You know, I just I work during the day, I lift, and then I train. That's my that's my regimen. It's it's tough to cram everything in. Um, I feel like that a lot though. Just just from coming out off work, and I have to go into the gym. You know, but usually after I warm up a little bit, that that soreness will go away to an extent, and I'll be able to train. But yeah, I feel like that a lot. But like I said, I listen to my body, and my body tells me I can't do it today like that. Then I won't do it like that. You know, in, in days that I feel good. I go in there and I, and I go 110 percent, and um, and either way, I'm in shape. You know, I've I've been, I've been in shape since the last camp, and I'm still in shape now, um, and I, I feel good. I feel like uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna peak out right on time. Uh, you know, at the very least, be in, in shape, ready to fight three five minute rounds. You know, no problem. You mentioned about your busy schedule between training and, and work and, and doing everything you need to get done. I mean, what what do you do to get your mind off the fight game? Is it is it merely just going to work that that allows you to kind of keep your your mind off? You know what the what the task is at hand coming up here on June the tenth. Um, you know, I got a busy life. You know, like you said, between work and I, I got two kids too. Um, so, but but I was always good at not not dwelling on the fight. Like, the, the, the only fight I've really dwelled on was, was the Macrosette fight. You know, that one really hit me below the belt. You know, I, I could have did a lot better on that fight, and I, I kind of kicked myself. I still kick myself in the ass for it, but I'm good over it. But as far as, you know, dwelling on the fight coming up, I'm pretty good at just kind of blocking it out and, and, and uh, working on what I can do. Cause I, I can't control what he's doing. I can't control how he's preparing. 
or, or, or anything he does. The only thing I can control is myself and what I do. And that's what I that's what I focus on, myself and what I'm doing. Um, I'm pretty good at just blocking it out. I don't really think about the fight until fight day, until I'm in the back warming up, you know. Even through even through cutting weight, like I'm not even really, I'm not concerned about him or what he's doing until until fight day, until until I'm in the back waiting waiting to fight. You know, that's the only time where I start really thinking. Okay, you know, think about what I've done in camp, what what I know about him, what he's gonna do, and and as far as um doing research on the fighter, I don't really do that much research. Like I look at a couple of his recent fights, mm-hmm. and I'll get an idea of what type of fighter he is. But I let my teammates do all that. I let my teammates look them up and find out all the information. I let them relay it to me and while we're training and sparring and I let them, you know, you know, simulate them and, and tell me what he does and what I should do to to counter what he does and stuff like that. I'm pretty good at just blocking it out up until the fight. Is I got that, a pretty strong mindset that, when it comes to that. Is that always kind of been your mindset as a fighter, just, you know, not to to get your brain so much into, you know, going on YouTube and watching fights, just allowing your coaches to do that and then letting them relay that information to you? Yeah, absolutely. I feel like sometimes you might you might psych yourself out if you kind of, you, 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 you're you you're worrying too much about him, you know, looking up all his fights, you know, contacting fighters that have fought him, you know, people that know him and just asking, and asking them questions. I feel like you, you might psych yourself out a little bit. I try to just not think about him as much as possible you know i get an idea of what he can do you know like i said i watch a few recent fights i let my team my coaches do all that stuff and i just concentrate on me you know and they'll i'm spawn they'll tell me hey you know he comes in like this you know you know uh move to the right or you know kind of with the straight left because he likes to come with this punch or whatever I, I let them do all that work and i don't i don't really worry about him i don't think about him i, I just think about me and, and getting in shape and what i gotta do and i, I don't really worry too much about him and I was like that with every fighter. And this fight will be a part of CES MMA 36 coming up on June the 10th. Of course, an event that you can watch live on Access TV. Josh, I really do appreciate time. Good luck in the fight, man. Absolutely. Thank you.